good morning. Today is the 23rd of March 2022. 322. Happy 322, by the way. And uh, I've not done any videos in a while because um, there was a bit of a sad story in the family. Um, my father in law passed away. He doesn't, he doesn't live in England, he lives abroad and uh, passed away. Obviously, it's been a very difficult few days, so I've not, like, you know, done any decodes or anything, or... I mean, I might be... I'm still following Gematria news. <coughs> oh, what's going on? Oh, what's going on in the world of the mainstream? You know that? But I've not, like, posted anything. So... <coughs> I think... Yeah, my voice is a bit, you know... <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, my voice... A bit sore, but because um, the children they, they, they were not they were they had not been well, so they, they had a cough. So looks like I'm catching off them. But I'm just gonna get. I'm just gonna not. Like, I think this is not a deco. This is gonna talk about what's been going on in Ukraine. So this man is Jack Atali, or Jack Atali. He's a famous author. He wrote all kinds of books. I've come across this name several times by the late Alan Watt, or could the Mitch.com passed away last year in, in this month, yeah. And he's he's like Zbigniew Brzezinski and Alexander Dugin. Two guys who whose books and ideas seem to form the basis of foreign policy in their respective countries, even though they're all aligned together. Because Dugin, Brzezinski and this guy, they're all aligned together. He's been advisor to many presidents, French presidents, perhaps going back to uh, the 70s or 80s. And here he is in 2014 predicting World War III, World War III starting with Russia and Ukraine. He said the solution is a world government with a capital in Jerusalem. Now, I heard that he's, he has a Jewish background, so that's probably why he would say that. But he's not just be, he's not a Jewish per se, he is a, a, a Sabatine Frankist. That's basically people that, it goes back to, you know, Sabatine Zeri and Jacob Frank, people who believe in the whole Jewish m Messiah thing, and, uh, and the reason why I bring up the term Sabatine Frankist, because it's people who adopt a Jewish identity and then convert to another religious identity that's Muslim or Christian or whatever and secretly had their Jewish background. So this Sabbatean Zionist <clears throat> I think it's perfect term but it's a Sabbatean Zionist Jew wants to uh, wants a world government. He's all I mean this guy's written books about what's going on in the world. And they say to come be accurate, maybe not a hundred percent accurate, but accurate nonetheless. I mean, this guy you should and people should know. Though I'm much, as much as I, as much as Joe Poetry is, I am enjoy decoding, and that is also appropriate to understand what we're dealing with. Global thinker as well. He he's an he's an influential figure. I mean, this guy. Not not an architect necessarily, but architect. I would say an architect. But he's, but his books are undoubtedly important. Like millions and winners, losers in the coming order. A brief history of the future. That's another one. He's famous for as well. What's the theme here of this book? Actually, what am I doing? Um, I'm gonna. Sorry about that. I'm, okay. His, okay, this is the book he wrote. What's it called? A Brief History of the Future. The first, the first third of the book retraces human history from prehistory to, 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 to from prehistory to today, with an emphasis on the rise of capitalism. Capitalism around 1200. Well. I don't think it's so much capitalism, it's feudalism, really. That's what, that's what we're living in now. Three orders, religious, military and economic, as a ritual order, the imperial or the merchant order.
the merchant order? Well, the merchant order sounds like the international banksters, people that control the money supply. That's what it sounds like to me. High positive merchant order went through nine successive geographic calls. So you got, was it Bruges, Venice, Antwerp? You know, it's talking about, you know, a print caravel, central order stock, counting, fluid, steam engine, pistol engine, engineering, microchip. Oh, that's the one. That's the key one. Microchip. Nine, Los Angeles. A city would then become a core when it was transformed into service into an industrial product. <clears throat> I mean, he's not about. It's, it's important to understand that Jack Satali is not about making the world a better place. He is a globalist. Sabatian globalist. Again, I, I'm using the word Sabatian because because they believe they believe in what the Sabatian Zionist Habad believe, bringing about the end times. I mean, they they want to see the world in chaos, which is what it boils up. They want to see it in chaos. They want the chaos to happen. For the U.S. Empire, he talks about, followed by a polycentric world dominated by nine countries. You know, well, not, not Brazil, Mexico, China, India, Russia, the EU, Egypt, and Nigeria. Well. Well, Britain's not. Well, Britain's not in the EU allegedly. New new hundred countries emerge in Japan, Indonesia, Korea, Australia, Canada, South Africa. A process of normalisation will stem from technological factors like the internet, from democratic factors, like aged like aging developed populations. Where we've seen we've seen how populations in other countries are. Aging, massive immigration from southern countries to pay retirements and from the development of megapoles, increase of world population, global farm production, doubling, urbanization, forests disappear. When we're seeing that, this is all this is all by design. He's talking about global warming. Well, we all know damn well global warming is based on a lie. The lie that is carbon dioxide emissions that are causing the warming. Concerning the droughts. I think a lot of the droughts are artificial, you know, using weather technology to cause these droughts, I think. And that is it to say there aren't any legitimate droughts occurring or happening. Hyper empire, nation states will become irrelevant. That's what, that's the key thing, hyper empire. The tire planet work according to an ultra liberal economy Basically, it's a corporate economy, you could say. Where commun where, where, where's communism or national socialism, all these other old ideologies don't matter. It's all about corporatism. That's what it is. We see this as a global citizens. I mean, he's talking about a system where there's no, nations don't matter. We're all under one umbrella. World world order, new world order. The ruling class called hype hyper nomads will ground its power on the middle class of four billion virtual nomads comprising technicians, scientists, miners, engineers. It's, it sounds a bit like Aldous Huxley, you know, the technocrats, te technocratic era. Oh wait, or was it, was that, oh, that was Brzezinski, right? He said technocrat, techno, techno, uh, technotronic elite. He talked about. Um, okay. <clears throat> The virtual nomads would event would live a sedentary life, but work in networks or companies without central nucleation. Three point five billion. This is the key. Three point five billion inferior nomads would subsist in misery. Interpret what you interpret what you like, but this is misery. Basically, basically, they want to keep people. Basically, this is this is. This preludes the Great Reset. I think this book came out probably in the 2000s, I think. I have to, I have to double check because I should have uh, checked it out straight away. 
2006, yeah. The next 50 years is talk. He's talking about the next 50 years. There's only one reason why a guy like this can have a can can, can write about things like this and it happens because they he's in the know. That's the logical conclusion you come to. I mean, you don't have to be a crazy person, a conspiracy theorist, not to see that books like these. I even thought about getting a book, book, one of the books at one point, but I've got too many books, so. But, anyway. Hyper democracy. Opportunities are more constructive. Developers are detailed on the term hyper democracy based on solidarity networks, participative democracy, responsible companies, NGOs, microcredits, and collective intelligence as well. The key, the key was NGOs. Basically, all these NGOs, I suspect, are run by the Attorney General Services. You know, CIA, of, often included in these NGOs. Because they, in many ways, they, they are better. They're better at destabilizing governments than, than, say, MI6 are, or CIA, KGB, because they do it under the guise of NGOs. I mean, he mentions Wikipedia, and Wikipedia is talking about him, interestingly. An example of collective intelligence which could compose hyper democracy. I mean, does this guy, I mean, does anyone think that like, he. I mean, it's English. The original, yeah, take 2006 and 2009, yeah. Merchant order. I think ritual order probably mean, yeah, yeah, it means, uh, but maybe in these in this period, like twelve hundreds, maybe it was like a maybe you had a Catholic church, then you had um, military. Military, you could say, was run by a monarchy or something, and uh, merchant order was a financial class at that time, but. I mean, to me, going back to the term merchant order, fuck it, just slam my door, you bastard. So, do apologize. I'm in the car do, doing this, you know, you know, talking about Jackson Tally, and then this, and some guy next to me is going home because he's finished early from work, and he just slammed his door. On my door, I'm like, bloody hell, man. What the fuck, man? I'm gonna do apologize for that noise you hear as well, it's just stupid. Let me just. So my door's okay. Settled door looks okay anyway. I mean, even though it's got a few scratches, my car scratches that were caused by me when I when I was you know when I was a bit inexperienced driver. But anyway, just gonna get back to this merchant order. That, that's the key to me. If you want if you know who the merchant order is, it's the it's the international banksters, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Morgans, all the. You know, yeah, yeah, pretty much them. And some guy, I think there's some, I want to mention something else. This is going to be, some guy mentioned that Rothschild Inc. is not, Rothschild don't operate in Russia, but I'm going to show you that they do. They operate in many countries. Look, I mean, look. Oh, I'm not going to go to fact checkers. Fuck them, man. Fuck them. I mean, this is an interesting story. Oh, former Royal Russian magnate's lawsuit to cover half of his cost, 150 million fortune, from Rothschild has been dismissed. <clears throat> no, 
let's look here. It is here somewhere. Abu Dhabi, Athens, Beijing. Well, this is showing where the Rothschilds operate. Birmingham. Oh, they're in Birmingham, Brussels, Chicago, United States, Dusseldorf, Frankfurt. Okay, I'm skipping them. I just want to see where it says Russia because it does say Russia. I remember looking at this. I'm not a conspiracy theory, by the way, or those that think it is. Just skip a bit, can't seem to find it. It was here. I mean, they do have an office there, but I can't seem to find it for some reason. Unless it's been brushed away somehow, unless they got rid of it. Which I think might have happened. I wasn't going to cover this, but. Well, at least fact checkers got something right here. They said they have an office in Moscow since the mid 90s. Well, I reckon they've been having. haven't had a lot. There it is. Even fact check.org admits they've got an office in there. Russia. I mean, if Boris Johnson, I mean, just a quick note, if Boris Johnson wanted to do something about, you know, Russia, they would, uh, they would go after the Rothschild, they'll, they'll be like, you know, why are you guys operating in Russia, why do you guys have any business links with them, why do you operate with them, that's what, he, that's what he would do, but I suspect he won't do anything, and by the way, just a, just a quick note, Despite the sanctions that we've seen, heard about, they're not going to affect Russia anyway. They might, they're going to, they're going to, just sanctions will always affect the people that are living there, Russians. But it won't affect the elites. It won't affect them. You'll, you'll hear a story about affecting them, but it won't affect them, no, because they'll, they'll have their wealth stashed somewhere, some offshore bank account. So I think I'm going to stop it now. I think I went. I, I didn't wasn't going for too long, but I was talking about him. So I'll upload this video some later today. See you guys soon.